Champions League round of 16, first leg ties, Craig Burley. Why don't we start with potentially the tie of the round, PSG taking on well, Real Madrid. Should we start with the fact that I've got no uh, football tops behind me like you? Uh, I need to <laughs> I need to do more. I need to uh, try a bit harder don't I, and put some ornaments or something there uh, behind. But, but yeah, I mean, you know, we, we cover a lot of, uh, well, most leagues, every league, almost, it seems. But, you know, we've been watching a lot of... Uh, uh, La Liga in particular because we have the rights in the United States for it and they've laboured quite a lot even though they're top of the league like Real Madrid mm -hmm. a lot of the games they've laboured and they've really relied on you know the brilliance of Karim Benzema and the outstanding season of Vinicius Junior now there have been other facets to the team Asensio has played well at times David Alaba has come in and uh, fitted in uh, as a left-sided centre-back and of course, the three in midfield that's putting the band back together this season, Modric, Cruz and Casemiro, but they're not getting any younger in terms of getting around the field. Lots of experience. But I think it all boils back to, for Real Madrid, the key is Karim Benzema's fitness. Currently, as we speak, he, he's not fit. And I'm not exactly sure what seven days or so is going to bring because he didn't play at the weekend. I am favouring Real Madrid just slightly, uh, even though... Mm -hmm. You know, PSG, sorry, going back a little bit, even though PSG got messy and all that, it just seems a bit of a, excuse the pun, a mess over there uh, with Pochettino and, and, you know, the way they've been playing. So I'm just favouring Real Madrid at the moment, depending on, on Benzema. Across the Spanish capital, Atleti have drawn themselves against Manchester. Well, they've not drawn themselves, they've been drawn against Manchester United. If they were to draw themselves, I don't think they'd be picking Man United. Or would they? Who do you favour in this time? Again, Atleti, another team we've seen. Uh, lots of uh, Man United as well uh, neither are playing well in fact they're playing awful uh, United are, were another story on the FC show again after the, the draw with Burnley another performance in fits and starts that, that looked as if it was going to gather some moss in the first half particularly down the left side it looked lively and bubbly again Pogba was back in ok Burnley were for 45 minutes were awful but it really could have been two or three goals for United. I know VR got involved in a couple, and I think correctly so. But the performance at times for United, Mark, was good. Until a team comes out and figures out that they need to get a scrap and roll the sleeves up, like Middlesbrough did, did like Burnley did, and this United team crumbles. It's got no backbone to it. So they are playing poorly. Atletico Madrid, wow, he doesn't know his best mm. team. He does not know his best team. He sold Kieran Trippier. Vasalikos come in, experienced Croat, but he's been hooked the last two games. Hermosa got an absolute roasting from Traore at the weekend. Uh, Joao Felix was back in the side and then subbed again. So that relationship is just non-existent. Obviously, Luis Suarez is still putting that effort in up front and running around, but not to the same standard that he was. And... Uh, you know, he's got all these players, Simeone, and he, he he just doesn't know what his best team is. He had a really good comeback against Valencia a couple of weeks ago, as I'm sure you're aware, with Correa and Cunha coming on. They were brilliant, and it was a great finish to a game after they were 2-0 down. And then they left them both out in the Barcelona game. So I think for both these sides, you just don't know what you're going to get. But I think Atletico Madrid are lesser of the two evils because they have better players and I'm just favouring uh, favouring Atleti, but both managers have got big problems. Craig, I mentioned that PSG Real Madrid could be the tie of the round, but Inter Liverpool is a fantastic matchup. You've got to make Liverpool favourites, haven't you? In this one, I think so. Just uh, bear in mind, and I know this touched a few nerves that Liverpool sent a Carabao Cup side over to Milan, the San Siro, and and and, and dumped on AC. So, not that that bears any real uh, fruits, but, uh, yeah, I think if Liverpool do the basics, their the speed of play, their dynamism, and obviously with, you know, Salah and Mane back, it seems fit after uh, their African Cup of Nations exploits, then no really harm done in terms of the squad. Inter, obviously, uh, as we speak, I think they, they're top, but by the time next week comes around, they might be second or third in the league, who knows? It's so tight with Napoli and AC Milan at the top there. Uh, but they're a decent side, they're an experienced side. They don't have that explosive power 
of an on for informed Lukaku up front like he was when he was really playing well there. It's a different looking into. But you just feel, Mark, with Liverpool's pace with a fully fit team, uh, just favouring Liverpool in this two-legged tie. Any chance for Sporting against Manchester City? Well, I remember going to watch Wigan Man City in the FA Cup in 2013 and Roberto Martinez's Wigan basically cost Roberto Mancini his job. Uh, and that, mm. I never saw that coming at Wembley. But that was one game. Uh, over two games, this City side, can't see it, you know, uh, not really suffering without what you would call a natural striker. You know, Cancela playing great football. You could rotate the back three between Diaz, Laporte and Stones and still have a great partnership. And if he's really struggling, you can bring Aki in. So uh, he's just got too many options and I don't see an upset on the cards here. What about Chelsea Leal? Chelsea away playing in the Club World Cup. Not played that many Premier League games once this tie comes around. Leal, will they fancy their chances of maybe getting an upset in this one with the second leg at home? Well, they're not having a, as great a season. Obviously, they lost their manager after winning the league, Mark, and, and so things are not as rosy over there at the moment. But, you know, Chelsea have not been great uh, recently. Uh, struggled against Swansea uh, to get the job done. It should have gone to penalties of... of uh, sorry, Plymouth, sorry. If Plymouth had scored their uh, penalty right in extra time, it could have went to the lottery of penalties. There's all the problems that are still lingering from the Lukaku interview and how that was dealt with by both player and the coach. We have all these players still out of contract, particularly Antonio Rudiger, uh, who has been the key defender for them. So it, it's a difficult scenario. Yeah, it would be it would be a, a little bit of a shock, bearing in mind where Lille are compared to where they were. But also Chelsea are not at the level when they were winning the Champions League last year. So big pressure on Tuchel because he's not going to win the league. Uh, that's clear. They're in a fight at the moment from the top four. And there's a lot of unrest in the camp. Uh, so things are, are sort of transpiring against them a little bit. But I just think they'll have a, a wee bit too much for Lille in terms of the, the strength of their squad. Bayern are one of the favourites. They've got themselves a nice one against Salzburg, haven't they? Yes, they have one or two frailties at the back, <laughs> Bayern, but they still want to play this open game. And, you know, the squad is still deep and they're going to win the Bundesliga. Obviously, Dortmund are making it a little bit easier for them, particularly losing at the weekend to Leverkusen. So that takes a bit of pressure off. And yeah, obviously, with Nagelsmann in, in his first season, a little bit of change of tactics, a little bit of change of coaching and different voice. But they're still the same old Bayern. And of course, that man up front, you may have heard of him, still scores goals. So no mm. upset here. Two more ties. Just pick a winner out of each of these ones. Benfica against Ajax. Well, I really like what, what Ten Hag is, do, is doing at Ajax. And obviously they score goals for fun in the, the Dutch league. Uh, obviously his name's been mentioned with quite a few jobs. And I just like the way they play. And I like the way they attack. And I'm going to go for an Ajax victory over the two legs. And Villarreal against Juventus. Well, it's funny because both teams have picked up, Mark. I mean, mm -hmm. Villarreal are now in the shout after the one at the weekend for uh, the top four. And in and, and Spain, as you know, beneath Real Madrid and slash Sevilla to an extent, it's very tight with Betis, Atletico, Barca. Now Villarreal are in the hunt. So... Unai Emery side are starting to pick up a bit of pace, but then with the sign of Vlavic, uh, who <laughs> scored at the weekend, uh, playing up front with Morata and Dybala, I believe, very attacking side for Allegri, uh, you just feel that maybe the corner's turning for them in terms of getting in the top four in, in Italy, looking a little bit better. I think they'll be too solid and organised for Villarreal, so I'm going for Juventus uh, against Unai Emery's team. Craig, thank you. Round of 16, first leg ties, all eight of them coming up shortly. Full cool coverage and preview right across the ESPN FC band of channels. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.